Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion on this. Uh, well, it's not the 4th of July yet. I think it's the, I don't know, I think it's the 3rd, maybe it's the 2nd. I don't know. 4th of July weekend, anyway. And there's little Giovanni back there, just ready for some action, ready for some hiking. Okay, my name is Kimberly Quinn, and I am thrilled to have this talk today about basically surrounding yourself with people who bring out the best in you. Doesn't mean it's perfect. We don't like the word. We talked about not using the P word. You're better off dropping the F-bomb. Though in general, people who really bring out the best of you and support you in rising, support you in rising, it's so important. And here's the thing. We talked about it like layers of an onion before, right? As far as also creating our life minute budget. We've had these talks. So we've got, or also like an athletic team, you've got your first layer of your onion or your first string. And those are your, your closest, best people you know, family and, and, you know, partners and kids and your besties from childhood, besties from maybe college, besties from maybe the military, besties because you just landed together and you, you, you're, you feel like you're right in sync, you know, spiritually and everything like that. And then we've got the second layer and the third layer. And those are all good people. And we like the small talk people. And then the toxics, they just need to go because eventually I'm going to do more of an episode that just takes a lot more to, to think about but the toxics the truly the toxics who are just not gonna i mean we, we can only change us so i don't want to set that tone but the toxics are those people that are like drinking turpentine for breakfast instead of orange juice they're not gonna change ever they're just out to take people down you know it's just some real dark energy and they just need to go because they're not gonna that's that's what they're gonna do so that's it we're not talking about them we're talking about everybody else so as far as friendships, regular friendships, and, and who was just talking about this? Uh, Simon Sinek was talking about it. I listened to Jordan Peterson. Jordan, Jordan Peterson's doing a lot for the young men, I think, for sure. But, you know, really to ask people, to actually ask people, why are they, fr why, why are we friends? You know, what is it, what is it about us? Why are we friends? And I think it was Simon talking about how that could be very uncomfortable for a few minutes. But this is a good thing to know because you'll know who is a true true bestie pretty quickly like very quickly and he says he's done it with his friends he said it's awkward in the beginning because the, the limbic system the part in the middle brain we've talked about it a lot like the fight or flight and the emotional headquarters and all that stuff doesn't operate by language so there there's like a there's like a a snag for a second of i, I don't get it you know because it doesn't the, doesn't respond to language the limbic system does not respond to language it's emotional so you're trying to put words on what your emotions are there's kind of this awkward pause and then and they'll say a bunch of things about you do this, you do that. And then eventually, this is coming from Simon, so i got to give him that credit. And I also know this to be true, you know, in my own life. That eventually they'll, they'll turn that around to being about, you know, how you're a friend to them rather than labeling. Like, hey, make it about them rather than putting all these labels and adjectives on you. Like, wow, I, I feel like, uh, and my, my rooftop friend and I have talked about this. My bestie from St. Mike's and I have talked about this. My friend, Dr. Dave, and same thing. I can go, I'm just because I'm so blessed to have, you know, a, a great first string. Um, again, I'm not talking about the immediate family because if you can call somebody at three o'clock in the morning and they'll answer the phone and be okay with it and stay on the phone with you just like you would do for them. I'm not talking like they need a little bit of time to get oriented, you know, get a tea, you know, go sit up right in a chair somewhere, you know, kind of thing. But they would s s walk through your pain with you and just listen and just not judge and not not try to chime in with their own story of whatever happened to them that was similar but just but just to listen get right in your rib cage with with empathy and compassion and love and kindness and just listen no matter what time of day and again you would be the same for them i know that to be true for those three right there in my inner circle my friend jimmy too I and mean, i've got a bunch i don't so if anybody's listening who is in my inner i'm not I'm trying to leave anybody out. i'm just trying to make make sure that um, I'm conveying the point because, and that doesn't mean that the second string aren't also your friends. They're just a different layer. You know, everybody can't be right in, in the first string. It's just true. That's how it is. And the second string is good too. And they're, and they're good for sharing all kinds of stories and things like that. But here's the thing. If you've got somebody who's gets a little bit out of shape, even if it's not super overt, when you accomplish something, you've got kudos that's a flag. That's a definite flag because, because the people you want to surround yourself with are people who want to support you in rising. Like they're thrilled. So that whole rib cage thing I just said, that means you can call them at three o'clock in the morning or wherever. Let's say it's, let's say it's a workplace person. You can walk in their office, shut the door, 
guess what just happened? I have to say it to somebody because I don't know how I'm going to get through my day. I just have to. Con and they listen and they shut the door and they stop what they're doing. They get off of the computer or their phone or whatever and listen. And the same is true the opposite way. When you've got really good news to deliver, they're not chiming in with, oh, yeah, my, you know, my son's getting married two in two weeks or my, we just, somebody else I know just got an award like that. You know, they're just, they, even if all that's true for them, they don't say it all. They just stay with you in your rising, shining star moment. And you can tell in their eyes that they are almost as thrilled for you as you are thrilled for you, right? Without being you, they're as thrilled as they can possibly be. That's, that's who you want in your life. And I think sometimes we really settle and don't settle because it, gets back, it comes to becoming, you know, living back in your frame of authenticity. It's only when we're pulled out of our frames and feeling like we need the external approval and the kudos and the appreciation and all that stuff that we feel like we have to settle. Because when we're in our frame, we're feeling really, really good about ourselves. We're doing the backstroke and authenticity. We're, we're elated to share our news. We're, we're elated, you know, to have somebody listen if we don't have such good news. And the same thing we would do for other people. And so that's what I'm saying is choose the layers of your, uh, your onion wisely. Um, because if somebody's, even if, because I think the toughest ones are actually the people who are like overtly doing behavior. They're like easier to, to move a few layers down or completely out. It's the people who are more subtly jealous or more subtly envious or more very subtly undermining things that are the toughest to navigate. So it's really important to ask yourself these questions because, you know, on on your team, your t like an athletic team, just like you would make cuts for any other team. Again, there's a whole gray area. That's why I'm saying strings. The toxics just go. They're not even first string, second string, third string, bench. They're not even in the auditorium. They just need and, and then lock it. They need to stay out. But the rest of everybody gets more complicated than that because we're all a mixed bag. So the idea is just be aware, be conscious. We cannot do what we do not know. When it comes right down to it, though, I think Oprah says something like this, too. If you're full of gallon size love and kindness, don't waste it on the pint sized people that aren't ready for it. And they're not hearing it and appreciating it. And they're in some kind of ways trying to cause snags in your life with envy and jealousy. No way. They're just not, let's say they're not Kim worthy or they're not, you know, um, James worthy or, you know, whatever worthy. They, they have to be on team, fill in the blank of your name, worthy. And all the mixed bag people, you just got to like really do some good social navigation and not allow that small stuff, that, that, that stuff and steer away from that. And navigate that because it doesn't mean to cut everybody loose obviously only the toxics really if they're trying to actively bring you down they need to go the rest of them we just need to manage like again like you'd manage a sports team so we want them to support your you when you're rising be elated when you rise and listen when things are going rough and terribly just like you would and that's it so ask ask the next time you're with your besties have a conversation and maybe you can go around and they can ask you the same thing what is it about us? What it is about our relationship that you're drawn to? Why? Why are we friends? What you know? And then watch what comes out of it. Just give it a go, because and if it, you feel awkward doing it, that'll pass. Because if you're all really true besties, that awkward thing will be like a little blip, and then you'll be you'll be like sitting on the floor with your legs up the wall. I'm thinking of college. We used to do that, or you're at a you're at a you know in a corner of a really cool bistro someplace urban, with great jazz music on or something, and just have that talk. What it is about a relationship or let's maybe there's three or four of you. Why are we friends? Why are we friends? And listen and remember the limbic system thing because you're asking there, there's a there's an inherent disconnect there. That's also part of the awkwardness is the limbic system is an emotional system of the brain is the emotional system of the brain. It doesn't operate via language. It operates via via feelings. So that's it. I'm excited to hear this news. And if you want to leave it in the chat of some of some stuff that came out of these great conversations, I really love to hear it. And that's it. Surround yourself with people who want you to rise and delight in your rising. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful Inspiration Bridge at the Notch in Northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.